The following video is not suitable for viewers under the age of 13. Parental guidance is advised. I am an African. I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the deserts, the trees, the flowers, the seas, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. In this video, we are going to be covering who Gayton McKenzie really is. First, we are going to be jumping into who he is, and then secondly, his activities, the activities of the past and the present. And then we are going to be jumping into the accusations. The man does have a lot of allegations against him, so therefore we are going to present you with evidence as well that's going to prove that some of this over here is actually true. And then we're going to jump into the public opinion and see how liked is Gayton McKenzie by South Africans and other politicians. And does Gayton McKenzie have any rivals? I mean, he has been a very colorful character in the last few years. And then this over here says, where are we now? So basically, we'll see what Gayton is promising and what his future actually looks like. Mr. Gayton McKenzie is a man who is excited about the tasks that lie in front of him. He has vowed to be more than just an ineffective government mouthpiece. So I think you must be very happy because now you have a minister that has the juice. I'm a minister that's going to make things happen in this country. South African prisons are notorious for being controlled by the numbers gangs, particularly the 26s, the 27s and the 28s. These gangs wield significant power and so much influence over the inmates. Overcrowding is a big problem too with some facilities operating at a shocking 200% of their capacity. And as a result, well, sometimes they have to cut people loose for good behavior. During Gaten McKenzie's long history and career as a criminal, at one point he decided to turn a new leaf. So him and four other inmates decided to sneak in some spy cameras into the prison he was serving at at the time. And they documented a whole lot of corruption in that prison. Things like bribes, human trafficking, and even sex trafficking as well. This is our effort in trying to uncover not all corruption, but most of the corruption in all the members. I can safely say that 50% of all prison warriors are corrupt. I do not think that I have found that this video took center stage in South Africa at one point. It even got the attention of the higher ups in government. And after some time, Gayton and his fellow convicts got a pardon. Gayton McKenzie is a South African businessman, motivational speaker, author, and now a politician. South Africa is going to have the best five years. They say the GNU is not going to last. I saw the EFF say the GNU is not going to last. Can we really take them serious? Were well, they not the same ones that said they are a government in waiting? What waiting? We are still waiting for them to come into government. I've even overtaken them. I'm a minister today. Because let me tell you something. The voters have told us, get together, build this country. We will not give one particular party all the power. You must share the power and find a way to work together. And that's what we are doing. We are building the country. We are leaving our differences behind. Do you think I, I don't have differences with the Democratic Alliance? I've got lots of differences, but for the sake of the country. I've got differences with the ANC, but for the sake of the country. They've got differences with me, but for the sake of the country, we must hold hands. He is the leader of the Patriotic Alliance, a political party that he co-founded. Mackenzie gained notoriety for his past as a convicted criminal, and he was also a member of the notorious numbers gangs in South African prisons. Well, after serving some time in prison, he turned his life around and has since been involved in several business ventures. He has also written books and he has also become an outspoken figure in South African politics and social issues as well. So what's the problem, you might ask? Well, there's a plethora of them. Number one, his criminal past was so intense that people questioned the authenticity of his transformation. And it doesn't help that he keeps on talking about prison, his jail buddies, and how things were with the gangs and so forth. Me and Kenny Kunene. We said, whoever becomes successful first must help the other one. 
Now, I, I became very successful when Kenny was still in jail. So when he came out, when I came out of jail, I went to go fetch him. I was driving a brand new Mercedes. Kenny jumps in, we are coming to Joburg, and there was a roadblock. And Kenny says to me, hey, G-man, I hope this car's not stolen, <laughs> I said, no. Thank you take a seat. The last time a judge asked me to sit, he made me sit for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I did. That was a long time. <laughs> Congratulations, Minister. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number two, his business practices. He has been accused of unethical practice, involvement in fraudulent schemes and exploitation of his employees. Number three, political allegations. Rumors of corruption and nepotism have surrounded him like a plague, and this has been going on for a while now. He has also been criticized for making inflammatory statements that may be seen as divisive. Edict in the house. Helen Zeller is the Nyaupai edict in this house. She is coming here and we must call, it, call her out. We can't tiptoe around this old woman that must be with the grandchildren. Me, they better take me now out of the GNU because this woman will never control me. If she's used to controlling non-white people, ah, it's got a fast look by me. If she's already trying to control me before I'm in the door, I will now present my case. Exhibit A, celebrity politician trope. We all know those politicians that became politicians after they were already famous. So here are a few. President Ronald Reagan, who was the 40th president of the United States of America. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Donald Trump, Imran Khan, even Vladimir Zelensky. So Ronald Reagan was the 40th president of the United States. Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California. Vladimir Zelensky is now the president of Ukraine. Donald Trump, as we know, was the 45th president of America. And Imran Khan was the former prime minister of Pakistan. Well, with Reagan, his stance on economics was flawed, and it only benefited himself and the wealthy people around him. He was an actor before this. You know how very few companies control entire markets? That's because of Ronald Reagan and the growing wealth gap. He had a hand in that too. At the start of his presidency in the early 1980s, companies outside the US were growing stronger and more efficient, which cost Americans jobs. So Reagan responded by changing the laws that kept monopolies in check, deregulating corporations, and lowering taxes for the private sector so the US could keep up. Lower our tax rates, deregulation. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a bodybuilder turned actor turned politician. While with him, mismanagement of funds was the main issue, and his plans to better the environment and so forth also failed. Zelensky, on the other hand, was a comedic actor turned politician, now president. <laughs> He is inexperienced and therefore he even handled the whole COVID-19 thing terribly. And his approach to the conflict with Russia is equally as embarrassing to say the least. Imran Khan has been accused of corruption and nepotism. He is now also being targeted. In fact, the Pakistani government wants to take him to prison. Well, it's funny that Gates and McKenzie somehow embodies all of these qualities and all of these people into one. He himself was a celebrity of sorts. He had a reality show on TV. He was a big time gangster who had money to blow, money to spend, a lot of women around him and so forth. And now he is a politician and sports minister. Exhibit B, part one, Jocelyn Smith. There was a very unfortunate case of a six year old girl that went missing sometime in February of 2024. It is said that she was sold to a traditional healer by her own mom for about 20,000 rains. Now, for those of you who are in the United States of America and other places, 20,000 rands would be the equivalent of about a thousand US dollars. 
Police have found pieces of blood-stained clothing during the search for missing six-year-old Jocelyn Smith. Spokesperson Malcolm Poiki confirmed the find on Saturday night. Smith went missing from her Saldana Bay home on the 19th of February. Police has expanded the search for six-year-old Jocelyn Smith with the dispatching of drone operators as well as rescue dogs, search and rescue dogs in the area. Now she has not yet been found, but the case is still ongoing and in fact it did take center stage in South Africa at one point. There is also still a 100,000 rains reward for any information leading to her being found. So that's about 5,000 US dollars. Well, how does this connect to Gates and McKenzie? Well, McKenzie has decided to pledge his whole salary of 100,000 rains which is about 6,000 US dollars if you round it up. He has decided to pledge his whole salary to the Jocelyn Smith Foundation. But the problem is the Jocelyn Smith Foundation might be owned by Gaten McKenzie as well. Well, there are rumors that he is a co-founder. And to make matters worse, when you go online and you try to research and find what's going on and who actually owns this stuff, the information is very vague. In fact, the information is not there looking for Jocelyn, we've given a reward for Jocelyn, and I can't lie about that because in two months you're going to interview me and say, show me, where did you, I'm going to give 100% of my salary to the Jocelyn Smith Foundation, so that other children must be looked for that are missing, because in this country, every five hours a child goes missing. So on the other hand, people have also said, all right, um, how is he then donating his salary there? and still managing to live his life as a minister. It turns out that Gaten McKenzie is a very rich man. So this also raised a few eyebrows as to where is he getting the rest of his money. And therefore, people started targeting him and trying to find out what other businesses does he have. And even if he doesn't own the Jocelyn Smith Foundation, it is no secret that his contributions of 100,000 rands every month could also be tax deductible. So either way, whether he owns it or not, he's still winning. And this is another thing where people basically question how genuine he is being with all of this. Exhibit B, part two, gang relations. A young white boy came into prison and he was given a chocolate by one of the gangs. And as a 13 year, 12 year old boy, he ate the chocolate. And that evening they started to rape him. They raped their child for many hours. He cried, he screamed, he begged. No one helped him. I was there, I didn't help him. The next day he was laying in a corridor naked in his own blood shivering. And everybody jumped over him, because he's a white boy. And just as I was about to jump over him, I looked at him. And something got hold of me. And I said to him, I think you should go to the cops. And he said, I can't go, sir. The criminals killed me. In that moment, at great risk to my own life, I picked him up and I took him to the wardens. And I said, this child has been violated. And they said, there's no proof. I said, look at the blood on my T-shirt. And they said, there's no proof. And I said, I'm going to give you all the proof in the world. And they laughed at me. He was incarcerated on and off for 17 years from the age of 16. And he was also at one point a crime boss and a prison boss of the 26th gang. He was also involved as a party leader in making sure that Jermaine Prim, another criminal and gang boss, was transferred from a minimum to a maximum prison far away from his home and his family. Jermaine Prim and many have said that this was a move done because of underground gang wars basically implying that Gates and McKenzie is still a gangster and is still making moves. So his party, the Patriotic Alliance, has been funded by drug money. Well, this is what most people say. Why? Because one of the people in his party, who also turns out to be his secretary general, Chanel Stevens. Now, Chanel Stevens is the daughter of William Red Stevens. William Red Stevens was one of the biggest crime lords in Cape Town. And he was also a drug dealer. He had made lots of money, which Chanel is now spending today. So it has been alleged that he has in fact taken donations from Chanel Stevens, who is also part of his party. So basically his party was founded by drug money. And to make matters worse, it turns out that in his prison days, Gaten McKenzie actually served prison time with William Stevens. 
Well, this was when they were much younger. So it turns out that they go way back. So what kind of men are we really dealing with over here? Does Gaten McKenzie remind you of any film character? Does anyone come to mind? Oh my God. The irony of garnering support from members of the public because of your stance against things like drugs and corruption, and then only to have your own political party sponsored by drug money. This is a man in a suit and a tie who is constantly talking about prison, gangsters, and street life. I can tell you a story about Pagat, what happened to them when they went to go buy guns to shoot me. I was shocked when I heard what happened. Two men, Pagat sent two of the members to go and buy guns to shoot me. I only heard the story four days ago. They went to go buy guns to shoot me, two of the members. They paid 18,000 rands for the guns, and they said, the one said on the phone, apparently, was that from Frank's kid. And, had I get in Frank's kid, but say, really. He is overweight, but he's also the Minister of Sports. Hi, everyone. Wherever I go, people are so excited, and they're telling me that how to inspire them to lose the weight. I was 146 kilograms when I became the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture and I started walking, I started running sometimes, walking mostly and now I've decided to take it a notch further. We're now having Wednesday weigh-in. Please go and get your scale and we are going to weigh in every Wednesday to see are you losing weight, am I losing weight, just to inspire each other. You know? A man who many describe as xenophobic and puts South Africans first. This is also the same man that invests heavily in other foreign countries and in fact hires foreign people to work for him. You have made millions of dollars in Zimbabwean mining interests as a mining consultant and now when you come to South Africa you say hey go back. The issue that I'm having is if they can, I don't go to Zimbabwe through the river going past crocodiles. I went with an investment of 10 million US dollars. And I said to the Reserve Bank, here's my 10 million US dollars. Let me invest in your country. And I made money. On a side note, I might go off tangent here, but one of the co-founders of the party, Mr. Kenny Kunene, who is also Gaten McKenzie's longtime friend and deputy in the party, turns out to be an ex-convict and a criminal as well. He was arrested for fraudulent activities as well as robbery. In fact, here's a video of him and Gaten McKenzie apologizing to the South African people for their crime-filled pasts. Um, we are deeply sorry about our past. And every day, we try to rectify and make sure that the youth of today's future does not become our past. So if there's anybody that I have hurt or the DP has hurt, I want today to the whole of, in front of the whole of South Africa, I want us to apologize profusely and say sorry. We were young, we were foolish, but we are wiser now. And this is just another red flag. So basically, the party is filled with people that dabbled in crime, in the selling of drugs and robbery, ex-convicts, and so forth. Is he the savior that the poor needed, or just another con man? In the sport, we should put money okay. aside. Okay. Okay. South African surnames there. You want South Africans to contest the South Africa? Wait, does Natasha is Mazzoni? 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 Is